Florida probably at the worst time. Yeah. They're trying to retaliate. Greg Gumbel in New York, Florida's win just a matter of time. Now we want to give you a head start on the Missouri Valley Conference Championship coming your way next here on CBS from St. Louis. We'll join Gus Johnson and Clark Kellogg after this word from your local station. Twenty two thousand six hundred in attendance at the Scott Trade Center in downtown St. Louis and this is the MVC championship game between the top two seeds number one Southern Illinois against number two Creighton the winner receives an automatic trip to the NCAA tournament Gus Johnson along with special K Clark Kellogg and we get an opportunity Clark to see two evenly matched basketball teams for Southern Illinois. They have a great inside, outside presence. They certainly do. Jamal Tatum, the player of the year in the MVC, gets it done on the perimeter with his speed and three-point shooting. Randall Falker mans the middle for him. Nate Funk coming off a tremendous game yesterday in the semifinals. He had 33 points, made all 10 foul shots, and was 10 of 15 from the floor. So Creighton controls the tip. Here's Porter coming off his first career double-double inside to Tolliver, who banks it up and in, and Creighton gets on the board first. Tolliver took a shot to the face there on the nice penetration and pass from Nick Porter. And he's looking for perhaps a contact lens. Probably should have somebody else looking for it because, <laughs> because if it's out, he probably can't he find can't it. He can't see it. <laughs> so both teams looking for Anthony Tolliver's contact I think they need, to give up the, they need to give up the chase and get that extra pair. I'm sure it's on the bench right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to wear contact lenses, uh, and that's what you do. You make sure you have an extra pair available in case you lose one. Solution and all. That's right. That's right. The whole shebang. Good start for Creighton. These teams only separated by five points in their two regular season meetings. So if form holds true we should expect a hard fought well played close game so I think Tatum, Tatum, Tatum found, found exactly Tatum found the contact lens and he puts it over on the sideline so here come the Salukis 27 and 5 top seed in the MVC Mullins is the point guard Tatum is the two guard he's their leading scorer keep your eye on number three with Shaw and Fokker. Now Fokker in the post. Mullins off the bounce. Loose ball tapped up and in by Shaw. Looks like a play we saw yesterday in the semifinal win. Matt Shaw getting to that offensive rebound proved to be the game winner yesterday. Watts can stroke it from downtown. Dane Watts, a junior, had eight rebounds. In their semifinal win over Missouri State, six points in 22 minutes. And Creighton takes a 5 to 2 lead inside Falker. Here comes the freshman, Isaac Miles from Kansas City. Watts deep again. Tapped around. And we'll stay right here. Good activity that time by Anthony Tolliver. On the weak side, you always want to pursue those missed shots, and he did and kept possession alive for his team. You mentioned Dane Watts being an excellent three-point shooter. He's a 42% three-point shooter this season, 39% for his career. 52 made threes on the season for Watts, and he's 6'8", but Funk is their best player, fifth-year senior. Porter, he can post you. He's from Compton, California. Knocked away, picked up by Falker. Now Shaw in space, picked up by Young. Two, make that five apiece. Creighton and Southern Illinois for the MVC championship game. The winner of this game receives an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. And Clark, we have an opportunity to see two equally matched ball clubs. 
You're exactly right, Gus. In the two regular season meetings between these teams, only five points separated them. Southern Illinois won both meetings, one by one, and the other game by four. So Chris Lawry and Dana Altman, the two coaches. Chris Lawry at Southern Illinois looking for his second consecutive MVC tournament title. Dana Altman, one of the great coaches in college basketball, 13th season at Creighton. And a look at the bracket. The number one and number two seeds advancing to the final, Southern Illinois and Creighton. The number one seed has not won this tournament very often. As a matter of fact, Southern Illinois in the history of the tournament has been the number one seed eight times and has gone one and seven from that position. And to add to your point, Clark, the second seed has won the tournament four of the last five seasons. Well, if you're a Creighton Blue Jays fan, you might hang on to that little nugget. So these teams are meeting for the third time. Southern Illinois defeating Creighton twice, 58-57. In Nebraska, Falker goes up strong at 72 to 68. At home, three-point shooting, a very important stat for Southern Illinois against this Creighton team. They have been able to find their stroke from the perimeter. Yeah, they have. That was a good execution, well-executed play there as Creighton tried to attack that Southern Illinois defense before it got set. That'll be something to keep an eye on, Gus. Can Creighton push the ball ahead and try not to allow Southern Illinois to establish that sticky, stingy half-court defense? Southern Illinois coming off a 53-51 win in the semifinal. Young off the mark against Bradley. Matt Shaw with the game winner with about three seconds remaining. Now Funk to the bucket. That's just what I'm talking about, being able to attack the Saluki's defense in transition before it has a chance to really get tight and established. Good job by Creighton early on to get to the rim early. 11-7. Creighton coming into this game with a 21-10 record. They've won three in a row. Baseline, Tatum, and Tolliver snatches it down. So Funk, along with Miles in the backcourt, Tolliver, Porter and Hipma all knocked away, stolen, picked up by Shaw. Young pulls up and hits. He's the spirit of this team, Clark. He, a tough, hard-nosed young basketball player. He really is, and in talking to Chris Lowry yesterday, he indicated how Jamal Tatum and Tony Young have really grabbed this team from a leadership standpoint. Both of those guys very comfortable with this team belonging to each other, but more importantly, following their leadership. 15-12 to play in the first half. Close game to start. Creighton, Southern Illinois for a trip to the NCAA. Welcome back. Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Championship. Creighton with a one-point lead. Gus Johnson along with Special K, Clark Kellogg. These two teams, whenever they face each other this season, it's normally a really, really good basketball game. It sure is. A tight battle. We've got two all-MVC performers, first-teamers, and Jamal Tatum, the player of the year in the conference, and Randall Falker. You see Tatum's quickness as well as his ability to shoot the three-point shot. Falker is the leading shot blocker in the league, defensive player of the year, and has been tremendous in the paint all season long. And Nate Funk, 17 points a game, leads his team in points, assists, and steals. And look at the numbers from yesterday, Gus. That was as fluid mm -hmm. an all-around performance as I've seen all season long. I mean, he was as efficient as a heat pump. Meanwhile, Jamal Tatum had 20 points on 7 of 15 shooting in their semifinal win against Bradley. Saluki's so down in that game, able to come back and win it 53 to 51 on the Matt Shaw tip in with three seconds left. So here are the Blue Jays. Porter, tough, hard nosed guard, leans in at his first double double of the season yesterday. 13 rebounds, Clark. Six of them on the offensive glass. And I was out on the court prior to the game starting, watching the guys warm up as I always do. 
and you could almost look on top of Porter's head. <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you're just nudging up against six feet tall. He had a terrific game on the glass yesterday. When you watch Porter, keep your eye on him and remember Andre Miller when he played for Rick Majerus at Utah. Very similar games, and they're both from Compton, California. Now Ba, Dotzler, Watts, Porter. Working the ball around the perimeter. Dotzler knocked away and stolen by Mullins. Mullins pushing it hard. Tatum rise and fire. Short. Side and a whistle and foul. Gaku, a senior from Paris, draws contact inside. Mullins picks up the foul, and that's his second as he heads to the bench. So a sub coming in. Nate Funk back into the game. Porter heads to the bench. Tolliver in as well. Falker. Checking in for Southern Illinois. Dotzler, the inbounder. Funk. Good matchup here, Gus. First team all league defensive player and Tony Young going against one of the premier offensive guards in the country and Nate Funk. Young from Schaumburg, Illinois. Now Falker. Last year in this tournament had an awesome game. 17 points and 16 rebounds in the championship game as the Salukis defeated Bradley and headed to the NCAA with the automatic bid. Tyrone Green is checked in for Southern Illinois. Eight to shoot. Clemens. Young. Off the bounce. And the rebound goes to Nick Bob. Creighton doing a nice job on their defensive board. And here's Funk attacking in transition. Tolliver. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. And Chris Lowry is not going to be too pleased about that. Early penetration for Creighton has led to baskets at the rim on probably 10 of their 15 points. Chris Lowry, 34 years old, one of the young, talented coaches in college basketball. His team, though. Off to a slow start. And there's Coach Chris Lowry, 34 years old, as I mentioned, looking for a second straight MVC tournament title. Last year, defeating Bradley 59 to 46. Coach Southern of Illinois Clark. starting, excuse me, Clark, 4 of 11 from the field. Well, part of that is missed shots. Some of it is the defense of Creighton. Both teams have been man to man for the most part. Doyle. And Clemens. Weak side rebound goes to Tolliver. Tolliver very active to start this game. Looks like he was hitting the eye again. This time maybe the nose. He lost the contact early. And now he gets popped right in the nose and has to head to the sideline. can take a look at what happened here. Tolliver with the board. There's the reach in there by Tony Young. It appears may have gotten him right in the face across the nose. Maybe a cut on the bridge of his nose. But he'll sit for a while. So Manny Gaku comes in and replaces Tolliver. Dotzler. Watts posting. And Funk pulls it back. Nate Funk, fifth-year senior, pull-up dribble, and knocks down a J. That is nice. He's got a wonderful pace to his game. Because he's stronger than he's been in his entire career, he's added about 20 pounds over the course of his career. He's able to get where he wants to go, under control, and still fight off defenders. Largest lead of the game for Creighton. Falker traveling.
Nate Funk, the catalyst. Creighton with a 17 to 10 lead on a 6-0 run. CBS Sports coverage of the Missouri Valley Conference Championship presented by State Farm is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Singular, raising the bar. And by State Farm, great service, great rates, it's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Welcome back, Gus Johnson along with Clark Kellogg. On the court, presented by State Farm, Creighton with a 17 to 10 lead so far. And Tolliver along with Funk. Dotzler, Watts, and Ba for great. Tolliver has that one blocked from behind, and here come the Salukis. Tatum, Clemens, Shaw, Falker, Bone. Pull up jump shot, and that one goes down for Matt Shaw. So, Clark, we talked about their first two meetings. In the first meeting on January 20th, at Creighton, Southern Illinois won at 58-57. Falker with a big game, 21 points and six rebounds. And he was the only player in double figures. Creighton was one of eight from the three-point line. Second meeting, February 10th, Southern Illinois won at 72-68 as Watts hits a three-pointer. And in each game, Creighton has struggled from the perimeter shooting jump shots. Well, so far, they're off to a terrific start. They've made a couple of threes. And they've also gotten the ball inside at will. Defensively, they've been solid, and they've really controlled the defensive board. Southern Illinois, not the type of team that will look to go up and down. They want to grind it out as Clemens knocks down a perimeter shot. You know, in that second meeting, Southern Illinois shot 85%, 86% in the second half, 65% for the game. And they're not known as a perimeter shooting team, but they made everything they took in that second half. 14 of 16 they made from the field in that four-point win. So Lukey's 8 of 11 from the three-point line in that game. Creighton 4 of 6 inside Parker. And he's the key to this team, especially offensively. I think he is on the inside. He's got to be a energy and production in the paint for Southern Illinois. A little recap of what's happened, what happened in those two meetings. You see Mullins got the game-winning layup. Three-point shooting, as you indicated, Gus, in favor of Southern Illinois in both meetings. And then Shaw had 25 as he and Tatum combined for 43 in that second meeting. And Creighton only 22 of 32 from the foul line in that second meeting and missed a number of key free throws late. So here's Porter with Funk. Tolliver posting on Shaw. Takes him inside. Nice job by Shaw to try to front a little bit. He's giving up some size. Ten to shoot. Porter again inside Funk. Nice touch. <laughs> he knows where he is at all times, and he never seems to be out of control. He's that guy who likes to drive right at the speed limit. You know what I mean? He doesn't want to go north of the speed limit, whatever it happens to be. Inside, and that one goes out of bounds. Well, here we'll take a look at Nate Funk. Back cut, staying active, keeping himself alive, availing himself on the penetration, and then knowing exactly where he is when he catches that orange. Funk with six points. They're looking for him again as he pops out. Now off the dribble, tough shot. And Shaw clears it. Tatum the other way. No points so far for their leading scorer and MVC player of the year. Inside Young. Snatched down by Tolliver. His third rebound. Fans wanted to carry there, but his hand was on top of the ball legally. It's only a palm when you go underneath the ball and then turn it over. Spring training is underway, and you can sign up now for free fantasy baseball at CBS Sports Line. Draft your team today. It's easy to play, and it's free. Find out more at baseball.sportsline.com. March Madness is on the way, but here in St. Louis, Clark, they call this Arch Madness. Boy, we were treated to two <laughs> outstanding semifinal games yesterday. The first one, 
down to the last play. Southern Illinois knocked off Bradley. Missouri State just had no answer for Nate Funk. But those teams, Bradley and Missouri State, certainly in the conversation for at-large bids. You take a look at what their resumes say. If you're so inclined, then you would think that they'll be certainly in the conversation. And I think we're looking at two tournament teams here on the floor today in Creighton and Southern Illinois. Tatum. Saluki's very confident team. They were down yesterday against Bradley. Remained composed and came back and won it. Well, they're tough-minded. The preseason conditioning workouts that they go through, not only does it help them to stay in, it, not only does it put them in great shape, get them in great shape physically, but I think mentally it gives them the kind of resilience that allows them to fight for 40 minutes no matter what the score is. Tatum knocks down his first field goal. He's one of four from the field now. Miles turns the corner, very talented freshman from Kansas City. And that one knocked out of bounds will stay on this end. 7.36 to play here in the first half. Creighton with a 22-18 lead over Southern Illinois. Back right after this. Welcome back. The game summary presented by State Farm. Well, you look at the numbers, as we expected, these teams evenly matched, played two close games in the regular season, and it's only a four-point difference right now. Creighton being, has been able to get the ball inside fairly consistently here in the first 13 minutes, but Southern Illinois, they do not go away. Jamal Tatum had 10 of the 16 points for his team in yesterday's semifinal win, so he's always capable of going live on you with back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back buckets. Not only is Jamal Tatum a terrific basketball player, but he's an unbelievable student, second team academic All-America in speech communications. 22-18, Creighton with the lead. Inside Tolliver, he's been very active. Off the mark there, Clemens with the rebound. So as time goes on, the conditioning and their great defensive work start to wear on you a bit. Well, they really count on that. That's why they go through the regiment they go through during the preseason, which is almost military in terms of its workload and focus, their preseason pre conditioning program. You take a look at Tatum trying to get to the rim, and that appeared to be a pretty good play on the ball there. Right now he's having some problems with his hand. Jamal Tatum from Jefferson City, Missouri. Four of five from the three-point line yesterday. And the first free throw goes down. That was the first foul called against the Blue Jays. Dotsler. And Jamal gets a pair. 7-17 to play first half, 22-20. The Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Championship. The winner receiving the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Porter, he's been quiet thus far after the double-double yesterday. Oh, a nice trap there on the ball screen by Southern Illinois. Chris Lowry got excellent production from his bench yesterday in terms of energy and defense, and he's getting that same kind of contribution from Green, Boyle, and Clemens here now. Here's Clemens, steps into a three. Count it. And here we go. Arch Madness in downtown St. Louis. Timeout Creighton. 22,600 in attendance. Southern Illinois on an 8-0 run, and they have found their rhythm. They certainly have, and it starts with defense. Good ball movement here, and Clemens wide, wide open and knocks down that three. And now the State Farm, State Farm presents the drive to 65. Some of the teams already advancing to the NCAA. Well, you've got Belmont, Davidson, Eastern Kentucky, Winthrop and Pennsylvania from the Ivy League. So five, 60 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> that was the drive to 65 presented by State Farm. 23-22 Southern Illinois after a slow start. Saluki's now eight of 17 from the field, 47%.
straighten nine of 20, 45 percent. Remember, we talked about three-point shooting. Southern Illinois now five of six from downtown. Yeah, they've taken advantage of the opportunity to knock down some threes. Creighton has been a little soft on the perimeter defensively. That's allowed Southern Illinois to get some good looks. Then a tough pass. Tough angle to make that pass off one dribble near the half court line trying to get it to the middle of the floor against good pressure. Shaw and Boyle run the pick and roll. Tatum is off the ball with Clemens in the corner. Here's Tatum guarded by Dotsler. Tough match up here for Watts as they switch on the screen. Now Shaw facing. Leans in. Way short. Excellent defense that time. Five rebounds for Tolliver. I think that was Dean Watts who held his ground and his feet. And forced Shaw into a tough shot. Funk has been quiet lately. Let's see if they try to get him the ball. And a reach-in foul coming up against Tyrone Green. Southern Illinois known for its defense. And we're going to show you. See, look right here. That's where he's trying to get the ball. And that's a tough angle to make that pass, especially when the recipient is being denied as well as he was there. That's a case of the guard or the ball handler assuming that because that's where he wants the ball to go, it's going to be allowed to get there. Can't make assumptions when you're out there handling that on. You've got to deliver. There's Funk. Hard down the lane. Oh, tough shot. Nate Funk. That's Brad it. Pitt with a jump shot. <laughs> He's got some biceps on him, too, compared to what he had a few years ago, and that allows him to take that kind of harassment while he's dribbling into the lane and still be able to finish that shot. He has eight. What kind of defense is this right now for Creighton Clark? It's a man-to-man -man defense, but they're sloughing off a little bit. You can see them backing off. Not worried about Southern Illinois shooting the perimeter shot, although the Salukis have knocked down a few. Green strong to the basket, and he's fine. Sometimes, Gus, you just have to be able to manufacture tough shots. Good defense here by Green, just a better shot by Nate Funk. Nate with eight points to start. Watts call for the foul, his first. And that sends Tyrone Green to the line, a junior from Monticello, Kentucky. Plays about 12 minutes per game. Dotzler checks out. And Ba replaces him. Watts also leaving the game. Hibma, a sophomore from Pella, Iowa, checks in for Creighton. Second free throw goes down. Game tied at 24, now Young comes in and he replaces Tyrone Green. Green doesn't give this team a lot in terms of points, but he brings energy. He's a very versatile and tough defender. He's playing with pretty good confidence. Porter backing up on Young. Funk from downtown. Hibma backs it out. Nice play to keep it alive. Tolliver, power dribble. Yeah. And makes it home. Anthony Tolliver doing an outstanding job of getting position inside. And that time he took his time and was able to finish a little quasi full court pressure here by Creighton. Dana Altman told us yesterday, though, they'll, they'll try to mix it up and play some matchup zone and mix in some man. And just try to keep Southern Illinois off balance. Inside, tipped Tolliver, and he's fouled in the process. Four turnovers for the Salukis. Well, Tolliver doing it at both ends. Here he gets good position inside. Boyle has no chance. Get more historic NCAA tournament highlights and exclusive video of the 2007 men's and women's NCAA basketball championship on your mobile phone. Available only on your AT&T or singular wireless phone. Singular is now the new AT&T. And the Salukis have stepped it up on the defensive end. Well, they're one of the nation's best in points allowed. And they do it because they do it as a team. 
They aggressively move their feet. They anticipate passing, passes. They close off driving lanes and then challenge shots. They do a good job trying to body up in the paint area because they're not very big. I mean, Falker's about 6'8". Boyle's about 6'8 as well. So they don't really have shot blockers other than Falker, but they do a good job positioning their body, and they work well together as a unit. Here's Porter along with Funk. He feeds the post. Tolliver has been terrific. Porter, he can post you. The pump, the grind, the dip. And he is fouled. <laughs> You like Nick Porter. I like Porter. I can man. hear it in your voice. He is Andre Miller, <laughs> reincarnated in college. Oh, here he is, banging, feeling that defender. Gets the corner turned and then gets into that lane to draw a foul. He's taken 20 free throw attempts in the two tournament games here in St. Louis this weekend. He's made 14 of them. And that's the thing about this Creighton team. They're a 75% free throw shooting team. That's 15th in the nation. They lead the conference in free throw shooting. Yesterday against Missouri State, 28 of 33 from the strike. You love to see teams above that 70% mark from the foul line because that allows you a chance to use that free throw line to your advantage and to squeak out close games most times. No full court pressure here. Surprising the Salukis and Matt Shaw. Heads up play there. Now this is where I would like to see. Oh, we got to go to. This is where I would like to see a rule change, and I may be able to get into it when we get back. We'll talk about it in a moment. 3:28 to play first half. 28-24, Creighton. Creighton on top by four. This is where I would like to see a rule change in college hoops. The 10 second count has almost expired. Matt Shaw does a heads up thing here by calling the timeout. I don't think you should get a new 10 second count if you haven't gotten the ball across half court. And because the shot clock is above the backboard, it would be easy to see how much time is left to get it over in 10 seconds. You don't, you actually penalize good defense there. In that allowed, case, they would have had one second. That's right, that's right. To get it over the line, uh -huh. inside, oil. And he buries a jump shot. Very good point, and I agree with you. Yeah, because I see that happen late in ball games. The team is panicking against pressure. Seven, eight seconds runoff on the 10-second count. Timeout, and then they inbounds the ball in the backcourt, and they've got another 10 seconds. 28-26, Creighton. Tolliver had it knocked away, hits the deck, and this will be a backcourt violation against the Jays. Their fourth turnover. Tonight on CBS, a heart-stopping challenge could force one team out of the game. Don't miss a new Amazing Race All-Stars tonight on CBS, America's number one network. 28-26, Creighton with the lead. This is the Missouri Valley Conference championship game. The two top seeds facing each other, Southern Illinois and White. They're the top seed. The number two seed, Creighton out of Omaha, Nebraska. They met twice. The Salukis from Southern Illinois winning both games. Both games very close. Boyle, 18-footer. And the rebound goes to Funk. Funk to the bucket. <laughs> Man, he can get in that lane. He doesn't get in there with blinding speed, but he's crafty and he's strong. He's in double figures now. He got game. Ten points for Funk. 30 to 26. And a steal. The Porter steps on the sideline out of bounds. Who's in and who's out? Well, I think you've got a strong case for all of these teams. Obviously, Creighton and Southern Illinois, I think, are turn tournament teams. Bradley and Missouri State have the look and the feel of tournament teams. You look at their resume, and you also look at the body of work. And when you just watch them play, they look like tournament teams. But that doesn't mean they'll be part of the field of 65, simply because as Jamal Tatum splashes, I think, a three there, or was that a long two? I think they gave him a deuce. But when you have a finite field and there are only 34 at-large spots, 
Sometimes teams that deserve to be there don't get there. So what happens in the rest of the conference tournaments across the country will have some impact on what goes on with Missouri State and Bradley. Although I think they're strong. They strongly merit consideration and maybe even entrance into the field. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, Greg Gumbel and Seth Davis will have scores and highlights. Big game coming up right after this one, folks. Duke, North Carolina, and the two gentlemen in New York will preview the game, which is coming up here on CBS. Foul called on Watts as he picks up his second. Full court pressure now being applied by the Jays. They trap Tatum. Skip pass, almost stolen away. Bone picks it up. Boyle rolling. And Tolliver with his sixth rebound. Under a minute to go. 30-28, Funk. Inside, Tolliver gathers himself and one. No, they call it offensive foul. I think he lowered the shoulder unnecessarily. I see so many young post players do that. Brace yourself, know where your defender is. The object is to fill. Oh, well, that's, ah. man, that's even tough. That's a tough call. I thought he had lowered his shoulder even more, but on the replay, it didn't appear that it was as demonstrative as I thought it was. So I'll swallow my words on that one, but I still see a lot of young players in the, po in the post. And a foul in the backcourt this time. Tatum is fouled. Feel like in order to brace for the contact, they have to initiate it. Let's take a look at this. Tough pass by Funk. Ah. He did kind of carve out some space there with that shoulder and the and the chicken wing a bit. But I think I would have let that go. Miles called for the foul. J.D. Collins, Paul Jansen, Jerry Pollard, the officials. These things usually balance oh, yeah, themselves no out by the end. Without question, though. A lot of plays and a lot of calls over a 40-minute game. You can't park yourself on any one situation. You've just got to keep rolling. Tatum looking for his offense. Shows it and travels. Yeah, he did. Picked up the pivot foot. Five turnovers for Southern Illinois. 18.8 to go in the first half. Shot clock turned off. Chris Lowry, he probably loses 12 pounds per game. He's so active on the bench. Well, he is an impressive young coach. You oh, sit man. down and visit with him. Very direct, very organized, very straightforward in communicating with his players. Funk again. <laughs> Big time game. Well, I tell you what, you got to think about trying to make him go right because he loves to go left off that two or three bounce move to get into the paint. And to this point, Southern Illinois has not tried to make him go right. So he wants to get back to that left and then pull up. Well done by Nate Funk. There have been some terrific ball players over the years that have played at Creighton. Kyle Korver, who right now is a star with the Philadelphia 76ers. Paul Silas, Bob Gibson yep. from three quarter court mode. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Great 32, Southern Illinois 28. Just as we expected, as you look at Funk with six of nine shooting for 12 points, a close first half. Expect much the same in the second. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York with AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Singular is now the new AT&T. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to AT&T at the half after 20 minutes of play down in St. Louis. Creighton leads SIU by a score of 32-28. I'm joined by Seth Davis. And, you know, looking at this game, SIU has won 13 in a row. They've beaten Creighton eight straight times. They're having a little bit of trouble. In the They're having time. trouble with Nate Funk, who's really carried Creighton as they've had uh, point guard problems. I'll tell you what, if Creighton wins, that's going to help Drexel's cause. Remember, Drexel won at Creighton a couple weeks ago. That win would like, look a lot better if Creighton can pull it off. Thank you for joining us here on AT&T at the half. We'll get you back to Gus and Clark for the second half of Creighton and SIU after this. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Singular is now the new AT&T.
the new era of Creighton University has begun. We have the ability to excel. The wisdom to innovate. A commitment to values. A willingness to serve. With the faith to believe. And to dream. One of the finest Jesuit Catholic universities in the United States. We are Creighton University. Willing to lead. One hundred years of amazing student athletes, leaders, and athletic achievements. Brought to you by the Missouri Valley Conference. From national championships to national player and coach awards and continued national recognition, the Valley is proud to celebrate its centennial season. One hundred years strong. The Missouri Valley Conference. And welcome back to the Missouri Valley Conference Championship game presented by State Farm. Creighton with a four-point lead at the break. The one versus the two here in St. Louis. Tomorrow, Dave's in the audience, plus Jack Hanna's Animals and a top ten with Christina Aguilera tomorrow on The Late Show. Let's take a look at the in-game box score presented by State Farm. For Creighton, eight Funk, 12 points, six of nine from the field. Matt Shaw with eight. Jamal Tatum, their leading scorer and conference MVP with seven. Coming up the second half of the title game right after this. Gumble in New York on the Clemson Virginia Tech update. This is how Clemson won at KC Rivers gives them a 75 74 victory. If North Carolina defeats Duke later today here on CBS, the Tar Heels are the number one seed in the ACC tournament. CBS Sports coverage of the Missouri Valley Conference Championship presented by State Farm is sponsored by Applebee's, Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood. Lowe's for all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, let's build something together. And by Direct TV, there's good TV, there's better TV, and then there's Direct TV. Welcome back, 32-28, Creighton with the lead. Gus Johnson along with Clark Kellogg. Four-point game, Special K. What should we pay attention to early on in the second half? Can Southern Illinois handle Nate Funk? Make him make tough shots the rest of the game. And then also, can Falker get himself going in the paint for Southern Illinois? He had a dominant second half in this game a year ago as they beat Bradley. They need him to get going, especially at the offensive end. And in 20 minutes, we will crown a champion in the Missouri Valley Conference. Mullins picks up the loose ball. He played limited. Minutes in the first half after picking up those two fouls. Only six minutes. Now Young inside. Nice catch. Fucker. And a foul. So let's take a look at the halftime numbers, Clark, presented by State Farm. Well, you see both teams shooting the ball well. Three-point shooting in favor of Southern Illinois. They made eight of 11 threes in the last meeting back a few weeks ago. Points in the paint in favor of Creighton. But as you expected... As we expected, Gus, coming into today's game, we felt like it would be a very close game, and so far that's been the case. Randall Falker continues to struggle. Air ball, and he makes the second. They need more energy from Falker. And they need more production from him as well. They called the play for him right out of that, right at the start of the half. Really were intent on getting it inside, so they get one point as he makes one of the two free throws. Three points, one rebound for Falker. Watts, a brick. Mullins with the rebound. Now Young curling. Shaw steps into a three. Tolliver, seven rebounds. As Funk weaves into the front court. Porter, high and in. Nate Funk, always under control, had his head up and kept his dribble alive. And Porter's defender peeked at the ball and forgot about his man. Ball stolen away. Porter to the basket. Again. Creighton feeling it right now. Starting out the second half on a roll. 36 to 29. Yeah. 
Young, Tatum, Shaw, Mullins lost it again. Nice pass, Funk, to Watts. And one! What a pass by Nate Funk from his backside. Eighteen twenty-one to play. Creighton with a 38-29 lead. This game is brought to you in high definition by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media. Creighton on an 8-1 run with six unanswered points to start the second half. Well, let's take a look at what happens here. Here's Jamal Tatum. This guy's going to get right here, and he doesn't see him soon enough. And when he does, it's too late. That's Nick Porter. Movement without the ball is a beautiful thing. And Nate Funk, right on cue with the nice room service dime, led him right to the hoop. Now Watts completes the three-point play, and Creighton takes its largest lead of the game, 39 to 29. Full court pressure here now to try to disrupt Southern Illinois. They want to speed them up. Southern Illinois doesn't really want to play fast. So if you apply some full court pressure, now you settle back into the zone. Try to get them out of their half court rhythm. But they're very disciplined. They, they, they certainly don't, are. They don't fluster easily. Falker. Skip pass. Tatum. Rise and fire. Loose ball. Falker. Get up. And he can't hold on. Funk the other way now. Inside Tolliver again oh, and a whistle on the floor. Tolliver fouled. Either Shaw or Falker. Tolliver. At the end of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team in recognition. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university. America's brand supports America's best Chevy and American Revolution. Well, that was really a nice pass into the post by Nate Funk. And there he is. He loves to go left and pull up that time. Challenged sufficiently. Falker called for the foul on the previous play. Tatum picking up his dribble in no man's land. Now Mullins elected to shoot today. Shaw will let it go. And he should look to shoot a little more. Matt Shaw, he's an excellent shooter. An improved three-point shooter and a very solid mid-range jump shooter. But Mullins only takes five shots a game, Gus, and he is reluctant to shoot it. Very content to try to run the club and get shots for Tatum and Falker. Now don't forget, coming up next, Duke and North Carolina. There you see this rivalry, perhaps the best in all of college basketball. And you see North Carolina with that record against the top 25 and RPI of three. You would think they very well could be a number one seed and they would have win today and have a decent run in the ACC tournament. I don't even know if all that's necessary. They very well could be a number one seed no matter what happens going forward. Now Porter breaks down Shaw, gets to the basket, blocked by Shaw. Tatum the other way. Somebody has to step up for Southern Illinois and hit shots. Well said, partner. Falker, short. Tolliver with another rebound, his eighth. Can't get much, can't get a much better shot than that. Falker just short-armed the, the layup. Now Funk turns the corner, wraps it around, stolen by Clemens. Well, Clemens has had a nice game off the bench. Made shots when he's had them. Been very good defensively. Mullins trying to cross over, lost it. And we'll stay right here. 15-58 to play. 39-29. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. When you look at Southern Illinois, Clark, they don't overwhelm you with their numbers, but they figure out ways to win games. 
their resiliency. That's what I attribute it to, the fact that they persist in playing good defense and they hang around and hang around and find a way to make plays at the end of the game. Case in point, yesterday's action in the semifinal. Dribble drive by Tatum, Shaw not blocked out, and he gets the game-winning tip in. And Chris Lowry, in our conversation with him after the game, talked about the fact that his team has simply found a way to win close games. They're going to have to come from behind here against a very good Creighton team that's done a nice job at both ends of the floor. Mixing up their defense. Here's defenses. Here's the matchup zone. Southern Illinois is yet to find perimeter shooting, particularly here in the early going of the second half. And they're getting nothing inside. 0 for 5 from the field. Shaw, tough shot, and a whistle. Offensive foul. Shot clock violation, I think, happened there, Gus. You're exactly right as Coach Lowry sits down. 15 27 to play, second half. 39 29. Creighton has lost eight straight games to Southern Illinois. Back door, bump, blocked by Shaw, out of bounds. Excellent help defense that time by Matt Shaw because Funk was alone at the rim until Shaw got there. Dana Altman, 13th year as the head coach at Creighton, has led the Blue Jays to six NCAA tournaments. He last won the tourney the conference tournament rather in 2005 and here's a man that has won 20 games nine straight years and his Creighton Blue Jays have won five of the last Missouri Valley postseason conference tournament games championship games rather Funk stepping on the sideline out of bounds seven turnovers for Creighton so you know that eventually Southern Illinois will make a run well you anticipate it might happen because they defend so well but offensively they've been taken completely out of rhythm by the changing defenses of Creighton. And because Southern Illinois does not like to quick hit or attack early in the shot clock, if they're not in a rhythm and a flow, then they end up trying to manufacture shots against the shot clock, and that's not really their strength. That's not their game. What should, should they do? I think they should look to attack a little sooner. And they need something inside, as you indicated. Falker is no longer on the floor, so they're going to try to go to Matt Shaw inside, and then there's a good look by Jamal Tatum. There's a couple of ways to attack the zone. You try to find seams and get it inside, either off the dribble or pass, or you penetrate and kick and then knock down your perimeter shots. So let's see what Southern Illinois is able to do. Now, this second unit is on the floor. You've got a couple of guys off the bench, Tyrone Green, Wesley Clemens, Mullins is on the floor. I think he's, he has three fouls. But I think our officials. They're trying to determine if it was a two-point field goal That's or right. a three-point field goal for Jamal Tatum. Yesterday, Tatum carried this Southern Illinois team in the second half. 7 of 15 shooting for 20 points. Well, let's see if we can tell whether his feet were behind the line. Uh, I think that right foot was on the line. From that angle, it appeared as though the right foot was on the line. We should find out momentarily. But Tatum is a guy who Tatum is a guy who can get it going quickly, as we saw yesterday, Gus. He scored 10 of his team's last 16. Oh, from that angle, perhaps. You never uh, know. Not as definitive. Let's take a look at that right shoe. You know, Jamal was telling us yesterday about the fact that he likes to look good when he's out there. And although he had a little discomfort with the shoe yesterday, he said he would still have them on the day. That's right. Pride like before pain. <laughs> because he likes the way they look. That's ah, a good look at it right yeah. there. Well, so what do you think? I mean, is that a is I triple? think it's a three. Okay. <laughs> well, they already said it. Well, you know, <laughs> now you go tell me you think it's a three after they had already determined that. <laughs> 39 to 32. <laughs> Great with the lead by inbounding. Full court pressure here. Look at Tatum trying to be a catalyst at both ends of the floor. And he's capable. Make that Hipma on the floor. Good defense by Southern Illinois. And a timeout called by the Blue Jays. 14 36 to play. 39 32. Great. 
welcome back. We're celebrating 100 years of excellence in the Missouri Valley Conference, which began in 1907. It's the second oldest Division I conference, 10 NCAA and NIT titles. And they've had some great players on their all centennial team. Larry Bird, the big O. Xavier McDaniel. Paul Silas. Funk inside, nice look, Tolliver, and he will go to the line. I would throw Junior Bridgman's name in there, Ed McCauley, when Louisville was part of the Missouri Valley. Third foul on Green, and that will send Anthony Tolliver to the line. One thing that's so impressive about many of these young ball players that we're seeing today, not only are they terrific ball players, but they're excellent students. How about Anthony Tolliver? He has a 3.6 grade point average in finance. He was the one AAA, which is non-football, scholar athlete of the year last season. And also, you talked about Nate Funk, a Brad Pitt look-alike <laughs> with a right. jump shot. With a jump shot. How about this little factoid? Anthony Tolliver went to the same high school, Kickaboo High School, that Brad Pitt attended. Wow. Caught you off guard with that. You did catch me <laughs> off guard with that. <laughs> boy, oh boy, that's pretty good. 41 32. Creighton with the lead. Here comes Tatum, weaving his way into the front court, kicks it down. Bone, a talented freshman from Tennessee, in the game now. Here's Tatum and a whistle and foul. I think he's going to try to take over. You can see his gear ramping, ramping up just a little bit the last couple of possessions, both at the offensive end and the defensive end. He splashed the three, and now he's trying to go to the hole. Good, aggressive move to draw that foul. Tatum steps back in the corner. High archer short. Rebounded by Porter. That's a bit of a force there. And that's what you love about Porter. As a guard, he is a terrific rebounder. Averages five and a half per game. Now Funk, high pick and roll with Tolliver, who pops out and knocks down the J. Anthony's showing us a little bit of everything. He's dominated inside, and now he steps out on the pick and pop, and Creighton has everything going. 10 points, 8 rebounds for Tolliver. 43 to 32. Clemens from downtown. Another questionable shot by SIU. Creighton with its largest lead of the game. Funk. Guarded by Bone. Down the lane, rise and fire from 15 short. Tolliver, another rebound. Tolliver is doing the Randall Falker impression from a year ago. And a whistle and foul. Falker call for the foul. His second. Well executed pick and pop here. Actually, it looked like Tolliver just kind of slipped and found a nice seam for the open jump shot. And here he is pursuing the orange on the offensive glass. He's fast approaching a double-double. Is he not, Gus? I believe so. He has actually a double-double. Okay. Tolliver. Well, he may be suffering from ten cramps points there as he's trying to and stretch And ten out. rebounds. And a timeout called by Creighton. 12.51 to play, second half, 43 to 32, Blue Jays. Welcome back, 12.51 to play in the second half, 43 to 32, Creighton with the lead over Southern Illinois. Anthony Tolliver with a double-double, 10 points, 10 caroms. Strong play at both ends of the floor for that young man. <laughs> Big reason why Creighton is on top by 11. Funk driving. Go right, too. Just left that one a little short. And Tatum picks up the loose ball. 43-32. Creighton leads Southern Illinois. Creighton the number two seed. Southern Illinois the top seed. In the corner, Clemens. And that one out of bounds will stay on this end. This is the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament title game. Chris Lowry, 34 years old, 
won it last year as his team defeated Bradley advanced to the NCAAs as an 11 seed and lost to West Virginia but right now the Salukis are struggling to make shots Boyle drop stop and he gets it to fall Southern Illinois 12 of 31 from the field Creighton is 17 of 36, 47 percent. Watts. Strip. And a timeout on the floor. 11.55 to play in the second. 43-34. Nate Funk. CBS Sports coverage of the Missouri Valley Conference Championship presented by State Farm is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste, zero calories. Enjoy Cokeness. State Farm, great service, great rates. It's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. And by Chevrolet, an American revolution. 43-34, Creighton with the lead. Gus Johnson along with Clark Kellogg. Let's take a look at the foul situation. Walker has three, Young with three, Mullins three, and Green with three. And the Salukis have 16 fouls, Gus, and we talked about it earlier. Creighton being an outstanding free throw shooting team at 75%. So you would think that if they start getting to the line in the bonus, it's Tolliver inside again. And he gets the roll. 12 points, 10 rebounds. He has six double doubles on the season, recording his sixth this afternoon. And he's done it in impressive fashion. And now, can the Salukis find some offense against this zone defense? Funk chases one down. Porter. Tolliver. Watch out. Oh, he has taken over. Big man. Ball Largest play. lead of the game for Creighton. He showed the ball and then went right to the rim. 47 to 34, and they get back into that zone. Handles. Tolliver hits the deck and the possession arrow favors Creighton. Anthony Tolliver off the baseline, out of bounds play, able to get inside where he's operated effectively all day. Now watch this up fake. Show it wasn't even a fake, he just hesitated and then walked right by Tony Boyle. Tolliver has scored the last eight points for Creighton. Averages 13 a game, 14 today to go along with 10 rebounds. He's had some kind of game. He and Neil Funk both equal stars. And you come into this game, he and Funk, both first team, all MVC players, as were Randall Falker and Jamal Tatum. So right now, those two guys from Creighton really carrying their team. Tatum and Falker not quite up to par for their squad today. Falker with the rebound. 10 25 to go. Let's see if Southern Illinois can get something inside and the foul as Young drives. And we'll go to the line. If you think FEMA is the first to respond when disaster strikes, you've never met David Canther and his volunteers tomorrow on the CBS Evening News with Katie Curry. So Tony Young hits the first free throw. How do you work your way back into this game if you're Southern Illinois? Well, one of the ways is get yourself to the line and knock down some foul shots because you always want to try to score with the clock stop when you're behind. The other way is you've got to have your big, your premier players elevate their play and I'm speaking of Tatum and Falker 
you got to find a way to try to get some points off your defense. Porter curling down the lane and a whistle and foul. And this one will go against the Salukis. Falker picks up his fourth. And the next point I was going to make is you have to defend without fouling. Because now Creighton is in the bonus. Wow, that's a tough call against Falker because Porter may have gotten away with a little hook move there. But I think Lowry will have to stay with Falker. He's got four fouls. And this game is slipping away. Yeah, it is starting to slide away. Free throw shooting so important for this Creighton team. Second one off the mark for Porter. Today, Creighton 8 of 9 from the line. Mullins and a foul called on Miles. And that will get Funk off the bench and back into the game. Four fouls on Miles. And that's the fifth team foul, Gus. So Creighton still has another foul to give before Southern Illinois would be going to the line. Randall Falker has been replaced. I thought Chris Lowry might try to leave him out there a bit. He felt it was too risky with so much time left on the clock. Tyrone Green comes in here. Shaw. Mullen steps out. Not a threat to shoot it. Young inside. Knocked away and stolen by Porter. Porter the other way. And he peels it back and runs a play. Goetzler. Falk is running the baseline, ready to receive. Ten to shoot. Funk. Tough shot in the corner. Loose ball. Porter with the rebound. And a new shot clock for Creighton. That's a case of doing a good job blocking out, Gus, but not pursuing the ball. I often think blocking out is a bit overrated in rebound. I think it's 70% pursuit of the ball, 30% block out. Make contact and go get the orange. Green picking up his fourth. I mean, Mullins is going to have a good block out here, but because he's sitting down and not in a position to get the ball when it comes off the rim, Porter's got it. I mean, Mullen was in ideal box out position and got no chance and had no chance at the rebound because he didn't pursue the ball. So Green heads to the bench. Falker back in. Dotzler. And this is not the team you want at the free throw line. Not at all. We talked about it. 75% from the strike. Gives Creighton a chance to really control this game, Gus. It's been officiated evenly but fairly close on the perimeter. So with their ability to handle the ball with Dotzler, Porter, and Funk on the perimeter, you know Southern Illinois is looking to try to get back in it with their defense, and they'll look to be aggressive. And the job Creighton has done defensively hasn't been bad. There's a good look for Tatum. And an excellent rebound by Porter on the miss. Once again, the Salukis one and done. Yeah, it's been that way pretty much all game long. They have no rhythm. Southern Illinois unable to find the pocket. And Creighton has taken full advantage. Skip pass. Tolliver has been sensational. Batted around. Here comes Tatum. Southern Illinois with numbers. Tatum hard to the bucket. And he throws it away. Frustration starting to set in now for the Salukis, who have turned it over 11 times. Under eight minutes to go. Here's the weed, Dotzler and Funk. Dotzler knocked out of his hands with 13 to shoot. It's been a tough day for the Missouri Valley Conference MVP, Jamal Tatum. Good look there. Not able to get it to go, but he's not had many good looks today. Credit Creighton.
time now for a DirecTV Mega March Madness update. Coming up shortly here on CBS, Duke travels to North Carolina to play the Tar Heels. Earlier this season, North Carolina beat Duke with a win today. The Heels would claim the top seed in the ACC tournament. Back to the game. 7.46 to play in the second half. Creighton with a 50 to 36 lead. You see Jamal Tatum, he's got 10 points, and Falker with only three, he averages 12 a game, actually 13 a game. So you see those guys well off their norms, and that's a big reason for the Saluki struggle today. Creighton, though, different story. 19 of 41 from the field, 46%. Funk in the corner, rebounded by Falker. So here come the Salukis, Mullins, Clemens, Tatum, Falker, and Shaw. They get it to Falker, draws a double. Mullins takes a jump shot, and finally, it's a three-pointer. Well, Gus, you and I have been talking during the commercial breaks. You feel like Southern Illinois has a run in them, and I agree with you. But they've got to get that ball inside and then be ready to knock down perimeter shots if Falker is going to be double teamed as he was there. They need that number two score to step up. Funk inside. That's a tough matchup for Mullins, who's a first team all defensive player in this league, but he gives up about two inches to Funk. And when you've got the ball and you've got those kind of ball skills and that nice soft mid range shot, Gus, you become difficult to guard off the dribble. Falker. See, he's got to go to work one on one. He's got to go to work one on one. Batted out. Tatum picks it up. Tatum step back three. Got it. Ten point lead. Largest deficit this season for Southern Illinois. 16 against Evansville. And they dropped that game 75 to 68 back in January. The largest lead in this game for Creighton has been 14. Porter. And a foul. And that will send Porter to the line. Clemens fouling him. Here we take a look at Nate Funk. So good off the dribble. And he loves that little 12 foot shot once he gets his defender backpedaling. Only two points here in the second half. The going's been a little tougher, but still 7 of 16. And his team on top by double digits. And shooting bonus free throws the rest of the game. And that's what young players don't understand sometimes. Clemens fouling Porter 20 feet away from the basket. Porter hasn't attempted a jump shot all day. Yeah, right. It's called um, KYP. So you want him to it. It's called KYP. Know your personnel. Know what it is you're trying to take away from the guy you're guarding. If he's not a shooter, back off of him. Porter 11 points, 5 assists, 3 rebounds. 54-42. Falker draws a double. Mullen steps into another one and hits. That's two. That's twice now. Throw it inside. The double comes, and Mullen, who's a reluctant shooter, looking for a shot aggressively. The last two trips. Made Funk the other way, though. What you like about Funk? He plays under control and a steal. Tatum knocking it away from Watts. Boy, that was so close to a clean pilfer. Cross-court pass. Oh, wow. That's one that you think perhaps could have been gone going the other way. There you see the double team. And Mullins just makes himself available right in the vision of Falker for the three-point shot attempt. Watts misses the front end. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Southern Illinois so far in this game, Clark, 9 of 17 from the three-point line. As Watts gets the second one to fall. Ten-point lead. A lot of time left. Plenty of time. And it's really important for Creighton not to start driving that car with the parking brake on, Gus. Sometimes you can start protecting the lead and you prevent yourself from Staying in the flow that got you the lead. Inside, Shaw blocked and fouled. He'll go to the line. Don't forget, one week from the day, 
the madness begins the NCAA basketball championship selection show I'll be there you where will, will you be, be partner I'll be watching you <laughs> <laughs> waiting as Shaw hits the first the lead now nine points now Creighton has 16 fouls as well so from here out both teams will be shooting foul shots on common fouls. Watts picked up the foul, his third. And here comes Funk. Guarded by Mullins. Porter. Funk, pull up jump shot. Got it. They are so tough because both guys are strong and can handle the ball when you look at Porter and Funk. Funk with 16 now. Well, he gets nice elevation on this shot. One dribble, straight up and down, splash. Mullins crosses over, gets to the basket. And gets the roll. That sets up the press. As Mullins now picks up Funk, they back out of it. Well, Mullins doing what he can to try to get his team back. He's come alive now with eight points here in the last three minutes. Porter lost it, picked up Shaw, and he's fouled in the backcourt. Nice little crossover dribble here to get around Funk. And avoided defenders and had just the right spin on it. But I think Brian Mullins could be a little more aggressive offensively. And there's a thin line you walk as a point guard when your job is to run the team. But when you shoot it like he does, you can set up your drive a little bit because teams have to respect your jump shot. As Shaw makes the first free throw, Mullins with eight points, 4-18 to play in this game. 57 to 49 and let's see if Creighton can continue to play relaxed basketball now that we're in crunch time. <laughs> remember, that, remember that song by Archie Bell and the Drells? <laughs> Tighten up. <laughs> Here we go. March. 57-50. Funk. Block. And a foul coming up over the back will go against Tolliver. And we'll head the other way. And you can feel the momentum starting to shift a bit. As they walk to the other end of the floor to shoot free throw. Nice challenge there by Matt Shaw. And this is just the recipe you want to take out of your cookbook. If you're Southern Illinois, tough defense, challenge shots, and try to score with the clock stop. And the point you made just a moment ago, a very good one, Gus. Game pressure. You've had your way most of the night, most of the afternoon, rather. But now the opponent starts to make a run. They get energized. How are you going to respond? So points usually energize defense. Yes, without question. That's why when, oh, Anthony Tolliver appears to be, I think he may be cramping up, Gus. He went to the bench a few moments ago and was doing some extensive stretching. And he's on the seat of his pants now doing the same thing. I think he may be cramping. So that means Creighton will have to find a new inside presence because Tolliver has been Terrific this afternoon. His sixth double double, second free throw, no good. 57 51 as we approach four minutes and a foul in the backcourt. That's what you don't want to do. Well, you missed the free throw and then you compound it with a foul. That's twice now in the last minute or so that Southern Illinois has gone one for two from the line. So when you're trying to come back from a deficit, you need to cash in on all of that. Tolliver being worked on looks like a hamstring. Well, you figure these guys 
three games in three days, Gus. You've got to load up on the fluids and the Gatorade, and even sometimes that's not enough to keep you from cramping up a bit. These teams play so hard and with so much intensity. Sometimes your body, even though these guys are highly conditioned, sometimes your body betrays you a little bit at the worst time. 59-51, four minutes to play. Mullins drives to the basket, lays it up and in. You're absolutely right. He has the potential to be a terrific offensive player. Well, I think part of it is just the fact that he's content to run the team. But he does show you the ability to get his own a little bit, and sometimes that helps your team. And hit an open shot. Yeah, he's made two threes here in the last four minutes. Funk driving, pulls up on a dime, and one. Nate Funk. Three twenty-nine to play in the second half. Creighton up 61-53. Mullins to the rim. But then at the other end, Nate Funk, sometimes, Gush, you just have to make tough shots. 61-53, Creighton with the lead over Southern Illinois. Nate Funk, 18 points. And this is what happened moments ago. That's the foul on Mullins. Didn't appear to be much contact, but it was called. And that... Dairy Queen, the catalyst for the comeback. Mullins DQ after that last play. He scored all 10 of his points here in the last six minutes or so. So now you have a guy who was really your energizer, no longer available. So that means Jamal Tatum has to try to be the spark. Typically, they like to have him come in off screens to get into a shot. Now he'll have to run the offense from the point guard position. On the baseline, lays it up and in. Tatum sets up the full court pressure. Why don't you double funk? That's a good point, Gus. You and I were talking about that. They like they feel like they can go man to man with him. But you're right. Tolliver's back on the floor now. But Watts is a guy who can shoot the three. Porter is a guy who can go off the dribble. So Chris Lowry and his coaching staff feeling as though going man to man is the best way to approach it in the last three minutes. And Porter is fouled once again by Clemens. Over-aggressive defense by Clemens. Yeah. Porter is not a threat to take a jump shot. And that will send him to the line. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, you've got to back off and just contain him. But Clemens, I mean, the way Southern Illinois plays, there's not much pullback in him. But sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. You've got to understand what you need to do and how to do it. And crowding Porter when you're over the limit in fouls gives them a chance for free points at the line. Especially when he's an 81% free throw shooter. That's 8 of 9 from the line. Make it 8 of 10. 63-55. Still a lot of time left in this one. Young. Falker. Blocked. And a whistle and foul. I think they got Day Dane Watts. Yeah, because I thought Tolliver made a terrific play up top. And there's the foul on Watts. Got him with the body. Nice execution here. Pick and roll. Beautiful pass by Tony Young. And Falker not close on the foul shot. Boy, it's been a tough couple of days for Randall Falker. And we talked to Chris Lowry and was hoping to have Falker play with the energy and productivity that got him to be defensive player of the year this year and first team all conference but he has struggled of late Porter to the basket wraps it around Tolliver and he's fouled hard foul delivered by Falker and that will send Anthony Tolliver a 65% free throw shooter to the line and it will also send Randall Falker to the bench that is his fifth foul. Falker leaves with three points. He also had five rebounds. And 
Anthony Tolliver. Number one seed has not run, won the MVC since 1998. Second free throw goes for Tolliver. The second seed has won it four of the last five years. And that was Illinois State back in 1998 as a number one seed that won the tournament. Shaw in and out, batted around Tolliver with another rebound. Two minutes to play. 64-55, 12 rebounds for Anthony Tolliver as Nate Funk weaves into the front court guarded by Young. Creighton losing twice to this Southern Illinois team this season. 58-57 in Nebraska, 72-68 at Southern Illinois. And a foul, which will send Funk to the line to shoot two. Anthony Tolliver has been doing work all game long inside. He's been a dominant presence from the start. Off the dribble, posting up. He made one perimeter shot. But sometimes it's not just production. It's presence that makes a difference. And he had presence from the start of this game. And you have to like Creighton's chances once they advance to the NCAA tournament. They have terrific balance on their team. Guards that can handle the ball and knock down jump shots. A big man that's playing extremely well. Both free throws off the mark for Funk. Now Tatum the other way. Almost dribbled it out of bounds. Looking for his shot. Gets to the bucket and hits. And a timeout called by Southern Illinois. 126 to play in the second half, 64-57. Don't forget, coming up tonight here on CBS, 60 Minutes, followed by the Amazing Race All-Stars, Cold Case with Catherine Morris, and we'll wrap it up with Without a Trace. That's tonight, coming up on CBS. 64-57, Creighton with the lead as you take a look at the game reset. This is the MVC Conference Tournament Championship game, the winner to receive an automatic bid into the NCAA Tournament. Great crowds on hand, all-time attendance records this weekend for the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. 22,612, largest crowd ever for a basketball game in this facility. And they do it right here. Arts Madness is a treat. Funk has been a treat to watch. Such a poised basketball player, fifth-year senior. Tore his shoulder up last year, received a medical red shirt, came back 100%. Watts takes a three. Clemens with the rebound, under a minute to go. Tatum looking for a shot. Don't need a three, try to get something going to the hole. Inside, counter. 64-59. And a foul in the backcourt. This will go against Tatum. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Anthony Tolliver from Creighton. 15 points, 12 rebounds. Brian Mullins, all 10 of his points coming in the second half. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university. America's brand supports America's best. Chevy and American Revolution. Goetzler, second free throw good. 66-59. Tatum, trying to shake him up. Fires a deep jump shot off the mark. Goetzler with the rebound. He finds Porter, and Porter is fouled. How about this? Creighton has won the MVC tournament each of the last three times. They've been the number two seed. Yep. And they've won five of the last eight. 
It looks like it'll be six of the last nine. And Dana Altman, the third all-time winningest coach in this conference, continues to do it at a high level. Got to be proud of the way his team played today. Not only offensively did they execute well, but I think defensively they were excellent. Could be a really tough matchup in the NCAAs, as we mentioned earlier. Guards that can handle the ball under pressure, yeah. hit open shots. A big man is playing well, and they're also a good free throw shooting team. All of those things you like to have when tournament time comes around. Tatum banks it in with 24.2 to go. 67-61. We'll step away. Back to St. Louis right after this. Don't forget, coming up next, Duke at North Carolina, who will be crowned the tournament champion of the Missouri Valley. 24.2 remaining, looks like Creighton. The Blue Jays are on their way, led by that man, Nate Funk. Dana Altman has won 20 games, nine straight years, five tournament titles, looking for number six right now. Well, it's a two-possession game. That means Creighton has to make sure they take care of the ball. They're probably going to have to make another foul shot or two. They'll get fouled immediately. Or maybe not. And a timeout call by the Blue Jays. 20.4 remaining. 67 to 61. Creighton. Sixty-seven, sixty-one. Creighton with the lead. And what a performance this afternoon by Anthony Tolliver. He made a huge difference oh, yeah. in this game. I think he was the difference. Funk was terrific in the first half and made some timely shots here in the second half. The defense for Creighton was good, but I thought Anthony Tolliver was the guy who really put his team in solid position to try to pull out this win. Uh-oh. Ball Turnover. thrown away out of bounds. 67-61, 15.4 to go. And Southern Illinois will get another chance at it. It's got to be quick. You'd like to get a three here, but it doesn't have to be, but it has to be quick. And you just need a score so you can get back into your full court pressure. Clemens the inbounder. He finds Tatum, lets it know. Cone, the freshman. Tapped around. And the ball will go to Southern Illinois with 6.3 seconds remaining. They got a decent look. Yeah, they did. After good ball movement, Bone had a nice look at it. And the officials are headed to the scorer's table to check something out. Dana Altman going to take advantage of it, as will Chris Lowry to gather the troops. Well, trying to determine exactly how much time should be on the clock. I don't think there's, there didn't seem to be much discrepancy between when the whistle was blown and when the clock stopped, at least from my vantage point. Hard to tell there when the held ball was actually called by the official. It was Nate Funk and I think Wesley Clemens on the floor. So perhaps they may add a, actually added a 1.1 seconds. So still might be too little, too late for the Salukis. So Bone will inbound the ball. Don't forget Duke, North Carolina coming up next. Tatum deep in the corner. Loose. Shaw is there. And that'll do it. Congratulations to the Creighton Blue Jays, the 2007 MVC tournament champs. Huge day for Nate Funk.
as well as Anthony Tolliver as Creighton, the number two seed, upset Southern Illinois. Coming up, Duke, North Carolina for Clark Kellogg. This is Gus Johnson saying so long from St. Louis.